Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to inspect a 1964 property. Yes, we are going to find stuff that is part of inspecting older properties. Let's just go out there and focus on the major components and just sitting from the street here, it looks like it's been renovated a little bit. Let's see how much they've done. Let's go check it out. Wait, please take the time to hit that like button and subscribe button. That really helps grow the channel and you can catch our future content. Okay, starting out on the roof today. It's looking pretty nice. You got a heavy composition composition roof. One thing you want to pay attention to, remember, is all the penetrations on the roof. And you want to pay attention to these turbines. Turbines are a really good source of ventilation, but you can overventilate your roof. Uh, also pay attention to the turbines that are not spinning. So if you have all the turbines are spinning, but two, you want to see why those two over there are not spinning. You also do not want a ridge vent, which it's not here, because turbines and ridge vents do not go well together because the turbine will just circulate air from the ridge. You want this turbine to pull air from the soffit area. These are done correctly. I'm just mainly talking about it. Walking over here, you want to pay attention to the addition. You can see that this is obviously a newer roof and you want to just pay attention to the plumbing stacks, penetrations, and then we did notice that there's some pretty heavy granule loss over here. I'm not really sure why. There may have been an old tree over here at one point in time. And uh, there's just one area that needs some repair where the shingles were cut all the way through. Yes, the ridge, I mean, granule loss is bad, but remember your main source is, is this performing? And right now it is, we didn't see any water leaks, but this is to the point where it probably should be repaired. And then over here too as well areas like that can damage the soffit area pay attention to the satellite dishes you can see that they're it's sealed up pretty good so that should be okay the lead jacks are turning over and in which is nice and then you can see how this lead jack is turning over and in and then they also like caulk the top the reason why they do that it helps prevent squirrels from eating up on the lead jacks because that happens all the time out here so that, that's really nice. So walking over here, uh, this section of the roof looks really well done too as well. No signs of significant damage. We only have one little, it looks like a hail dink at one point in time. Uh, we'll document it, but it doesn't mean that it's bad. It just says, hey, you have a little bit of hail damage. Definitely not for an insurance claim. Oh, look at this. You have tree touch in. And yeah, you definitely have some tree damage right here. So we definitely want to have this area repaired. It's just being held up together by some sealant. And then anything where trees are touching or anything like that, you definitely want to trim back any trees. I did pull it back over there and we didn't see any signs of damage like it was over there to that other tree. So you can see that looks okay. So overall, roof is good, just needs a little bit of TLC. What I used to do is I used to leave my ladder up all the time. This is one of our older Little Giant ladders. I do recommend Little Giant ladders. This one is about close to eight years old, been opened thousands of times, and it works perfectly fine. You can find this ladder on our home IW tool list, and yeah, just check it out if you want a Little Giant ladder. But I used to leave it up like this. It's actually not a good idea because Whenever you're inside, one day you'll hear your client walk in the roof. It's actually best to leave it down like this or leave it up inside the property so you can keep an eye on your equipment. And then also, it just kind of shows a display saying, hey, I use this ladder to get on your roof. It helps tell the story as the client walks up through the door. Looking at the exterior of the home, uh, one thing you want to be pay attention to and also document is that all the brick is painted. Painted brick can hide defects from as a from a home inspector. They can patch the mortar up real well, and you cannot see the discoloration across the mortar. Do I think anything's wrong with this one? No, not really, but it is something that you want to put in your reports. Next item is we have a thermal paint seal that's lost. Yes, you do don't want to document it. Is it a major issue? Not really. It costs about $250 to $500 per window to replace. Just remember this window is still performing. It is shedding water. It's just not performing in a cosmetic sense. And then also you have a little bit of energy loss through this window, but it is keeping the elements out such as wind and rain uh, from your property, which is, which is good. Next item is on the exterior of the structure. 
whenever they painted and patched up everything, it looks like they blocked all the weep holes to the structure. You definitely want to tell them to open up these weep holes because this can cause uh, moisture issues within your wall. Your walls need to breathe and we don't know what type of paint this is. So you remember the brick is sealed. There's no ventilation through the bottom of the brick or weep holes. So uh, this is something that you want to tell them that they want to probably act on fairly quickly. So right out here we have a water main. Anytime you've seen it, any kind of discoloration, you want to pay attention to stuff like this. And then also this isn't really an easy shut off. It's an older shut off, it still works. We'll just let them know about the type of shut off that's in place. But you want to pay attention to water leaks from the main. Uh, this can save the client some money down the line. So easy spot check your water mains. If you're wondering what a weep hole is, this is actually where an old weep hole is and they mortared over it thinking that they're gonna keep the bugs and insects out. These are there on purpose, so they should be every 33 inches on the exterior of your property. Another really good place to look is actually right here underneath fences and whatnot. Uh, this is a good spot to try to find termites if they're around the structure. Uh, I'm not seeing any today, so that's good. So we have a really nice train unit. It's a 2007 three and a half ton 14 sear unit. It's using 410A Freon, so just remember document that. You wanna be in the attic space to make sure that the coils match the exterior condenser unit. Uh, a lot of times they'll update one and not the other. Also another good thing to keep track of is you wanna keep a track of your breaker sizes. It's a good thing to keep an eye on. Right here, your primary condensate drain line. You want this to extend out. You can see that you have some high soil, excessive moisture, easy area to get termites. This is a conducive area for termites. Now go in our termite section and in our grading and drainage of our home inspection report. Next item here is you can see as we're walking around the exterior of the structure, you can see that the soil is marginally high or it's actually considered high soil. But remember these property is older and they sink over time. Can they really 100% fix this? Not really without creating negative drainage to the structure. So what we wanna make sure that we do is we just inform them, hey, keep an eye on this. Uh, this is an area where you can have possible water leaks, but remember it's older too. So whenever you're inside the structure, do you see any immediate damage happening? So don't cause a problem if there's not one. Remember, this home's been here for a long time. It's built in the 60s. It's older than me and <laughs> and uh, uh, the property's just performing just fine. It just has a little bit of grading high soil. The client informed us that they're gonna do a hydrostatic test, which is nice, uh, but one here, out here you can see that they've done some sort of repair. It looks like they replaced the cast iron at one point in time. It might just be in the yard, so we're gonna, they're gonna be able to determine if the cast iron uh, goes underneath the structure or not whenever the plumber gets here. But this is a good sign showing that they have done some sort of work. And you wanna just recommend, we put in the report, say, hey, looks like there's been prior repair, recommended to contact the seller and ask them for any type of warranty that might be involved with this plumbing repair. I'm only going to hit this one time. You don't really need to hit it too much. Just recommend to seal all exterior fixtures and uh, exterior penetrations. This is almost on every single home inspection report. Uh, just get used to calling it out or get used to seeing it. Either way, uh, no one ever really has all their homes sealed up other than me probably. <laughs> So they did a really good job at matching this, but if you can see this little circle here and about 12 inches down, you'll have another circle here and it actually repeats itself all the way around the structure. That is a sign of termite treatments. So this just indicates that they have done previous termite uh, treatment, which is very common in Houston. Do not get scared if the property has had termites. Just we want to make sure that they properly treated it, took care of the damage, and the problem has been solved. Here you go. This is a better look at what a termite treatment hole looks like. So part of doing two passes of the exterior, we have some lifted drip edge flashing. Easy area to get some water back into the soffit area. It doesn't look like it's caused any immediate damage right now, but easy call out, easy area that should be repaired, and it's an easy repair, which is nice. Another call out that you wanna bring up is uh, surface drain systems. Uh, you just wanna document if it's dirty or clogged, or also you can't test the performance, but you can see that it doesn't appear to be performing very well. You have some erosion, and it looks like you have 
pulling and standing water here from the heavy dirt, so we'll recommend to clean out the surface drain system or French drain system, whatever you like to call it. Next item, uh, easy call out. We have some fascia uh, wood rot damage here. Again, nothing to stress about too much. It's a little bit older property. You're gonna come across this pretty often on properties of this age. So any areas where you see like pulling dirt like this, you gotta remember how does it get there. So you do have a little bit of marginal drainage in this area. Is it significant? Not really. There's just no gutters on the structure. So gutters are not required in Texas. So we don't even call them out, but we will call out your drainage issues. So right with the termite treatment, you also have bait stations. So this is part of contacting the, contacting the seller and asking them uh, who does the plan, any warranties in place, or how do you keep up with the plan in place if you are worried about termites. Another sign here that they have replaced most of the cast iron on the structure. You see right here they bypassed it and they left the old cast iron in place, which is okay. You just want to make sure if there's any warranties involved. And then we have some discoloration here, right there. So pay it, you want it, something to pay attention to and you have some heavy caulking. So this may have came loose at one time. Um, we'll write up prior repair in this area. It doesn't look to standard, so we might recommend for a plumber here. We'll also run the sink inside to see if it's currently leaking at the time of the inspection. Here in the same area, we, we have a little bit of moisture coming out of this clean out too as well, or prior moisture. So this actually correlates with what was happening in the front. So we know we might have a plumbing issue in this location. They do have a hydrostatic test uh, scheduled for today, which is nice. The hydrostatic test won't find why that's happening, or it could find why that's happening if there's some sort of blockages. But normally before a hydrostatic test, a company normally uh, does a, a sewer scope scan first. So they might find some sort of blockage in that area before they do the hydrostatic test. So right here, you can see the lack of gutters. It's actually starting to erode away the soil in this location. So if you don't have gutters in your properties, remember this is gonna be a number one thing that you're gonna have to keep in contact with or stay up on because your soil will erode away. And the number one thing that causes foundation issues in Houston or Texas, or probably just everywhere, but I'm mainly in Texas, is poor grading and drainage. It causes your structure to move. So Tyler here is looking for gas leaks around the, uh, the equipment. But while he's doing that, check this out. We have some prior water leaks at one point in time. It doesn't appear to be active, but definitely something you want to report on. And since we already need a plumber to check those exterior leaks, um, we can just have them reset this up and you can see there's some corrosion around the fitting too so it's probably a very very slow leak on the water heater easy call out easy spot next thing to kind of report on is you start to see some heavy dryer lint dryer lint is really flammable and this is a gas water heater so you do want to report on that that the dryer might not be connected properly you know the dryer is all the way over here let's check out behind it yeah you got a heavy bend there yeah and then it comes up and through the cabinet over here yeah so they probably have some sort of leak yeah that, that's a, a weird way to travel and then proper material for the uh, the dryer they must have added this in at one point in time so they probably have some sort of lint leak that's getting close to the gas water heater can they really do anything about it not really uh they just need to seal it up a little bit better and add in like a rigid pipe to help prevent, to allow the, the lint to travel out a little bit uh, easier. Open junction boxes uh, should be called out and capped off. So moving into the attic space, we do have an older furnace. We'll remove this uh, panel just to check it out. It's being balanced with some bricks. Not ideal, but it's working. Uh, you can see it's dated back to 1995, so we will document older age equipment. One of the biggest problems that we have with whenever they add on to units like this or they improve the ductwork, you can see newer ductwork, is that you the seals are normally broken. So you can see over here in the corner, got my laser pointer. You can see over in the corner you have some splits in the duct system. So we will call that out and I would recommend to repair that immediately. And then you have some like crushed ducts here too as well. So that can restrict the airflow uh, to, to the property. And then going back to the AC unit, you can see that's a 
410A Freon uh, coils, three and a half ton, and then we'll open up the little hatch to check out the, the condition of the coils. As you can see, they've had issues in the past. We'll definitely call out to replace that pan. You can see it's rusted through and it was leaking at one point in time. Two things that you're always gonna see in Houston, Texas is roof and AC repair, always always you're gonna find that okay final breakdown of this property it's actually in really good shape 1960s you know that that's really nice also it has it, you need a roofer you need a plumber and you need an HVAC technician but also it's 1960s and we are calling those out I'd say a roofer in HVAC is almost required on almost all properties that's things that are neglected the most on our structures and they need the most amount of attention in the south uh, but the plumbing is actually what I would be worried about most because that, that looks like it would cause the most immediate damage to the structure following the HVAC where the HVAC needs to be resealed up. They're cooling the attic space, which is not ideal. And, and the roof would be last because it's not currently leaking, but it is more preventative. So those are my three top things with this property. Everything else is just general maintenance and things that just happen to be on a 1960s property. So this one's in really good shape. No structural movement too, which is really nice. If you like this type of content, please hit that like and subscribe button and catch us on the next one. Thanks guys, bye.